I like to taste the raspberries, but when I eat them, I see this color of blue up in my sort of left upper periphery. That's very comforting. A is red, um, which is common, I guess. Um, B is blue, C is yellow, D is blue, but more of a green blue than B. If I were to hear a low note, it would be at the back of my throat and maybe the back of my tongue, and coming up to the front of my mouth is where all the high notes are. Voices are just kind of like squiggles, because there are so many notes going on, it is so stop-start kind of thing, right? It's probably, human talking is probably one of the ugliest sounds. <laughs> Our perception of the world is a personal experience. We base this on how we grew up, and we are creations of our cultural environments. But our surroundings are brought to us through our system of senses. And for some of us, reality is a rich, multi-sensory experience created in the pathways of our brains. So I kind of taste music in the sense of numbers, letters, and kind of waves and sounds and graphs. I have grapheme color synesthesia, and also my days of the week have color. The form of synesthesia I have is called timbre to shape synesthesia. So what it is, it's really all sounds. I have them as a vision in front of me. It's a, a kinesthetic uh, to color uh, and also to uh, elements of sound. I just learned out about six months ago I have multimodal synesthesia, which is where, it, um, this is a complicated one, but the sheet, and, and I'm lying in bed, and the bed sheet touches my leg, okay? So the feeling of the sheet touching my leg tastes like the way a painting looks. I know, like, there, there you go. So touch tastes like the way a painting looks. Our brains have developed separate areas that process many more than five sensations. These different regions are connected, but distinct from each other. But in the brains of synesthetes, these areas are hyperconnected and even cross-wired. And this increased connectivity allows for multiple senses to respond to one stimulation. I started spending a lot of time figuring out how does my synesthesia work, what triggers all of these different forms, and almost reverse engineering the visions I have, and then figuring out how to use all kinds of different instruments and timbres to create more to see. Scientists used to be skeptical of synesthesia, and these curious accounts were dismissed as wild imagination. But there are some common characteristics in synesthesia. The experiences are consistent and unchanging, and the reactions are involuntary. 
we have evolved to make sense of a chaotic and vibrant world. And our brains are able to filter and suppress unnecessary information. But in synesthetes, those filters may be more porous, meaning the ability to inhibit these connections is less present. And brain activity can flow easily into regions that otherwise would not be stimulated. One thing that I sometimes use to explain it to my friends is to say, like, imagine that you have a picture of a lemon that's in black and white, and you look at the picture of the lemon, and it's in black and white, uh, but you know that it's yellow because you just, you know that it is because lemons are yellow. So it's sort of the same thing. Like, if I look at the letter A on paper, it's still black on paper, but in my head I just think, oh, well, yeah, it's red because A is red. Ticking clocks annoy me because it's a strobe light that won't go away, but that's really pretty minor. And again, the shapes that I see, they are outside of me. It's a different layer of seeing, so it's not, there's no confusion at all for me. I'm not going to bump into a wall because the shape of a cello sound was in front of it and I didn't see it. In most cases, synesthesia occurs at birth and is often hereditary. But in some very rare cases, a person can acquire synesthesia after a brain injury. Because as the brain repairs itself, it makes new, sometimes flawed connections, literally rewiring itself into a totally different brain. When I was 42, I had a massive uh, hemorrhagic thalamic stroke. I bled into my brain. That was in May of 2007. About a year and a few months later, it would be August, of 2008, I had, I guess, my first profound synesthetic experience, which I didn't know at the time was synesthesia. I thought it was the beginnings of insanity. The brain is a beautiful thing where it tries to actively repair itself. Um, it's referred to as neuroplasticity. Uh, and it just so happens that that area of the brain there's a lot of fibers adjacent to where his stroke was, where his hemorrhage was, and by virtue of it reconnecting, it now started to speak to areas of the brain, or areas of the brain were starting to speak to one another that normally would never. Because of my stroke, I, I don't feel, feel sensation on uh, my right upper body or my face. But last week, I was at my cousin's, and I, I put both hands on her granite countertop, and I felt cold. I felt the cold granite countertop with my, my right hand. And before I could say, oh, I can feel a bit of the cold, um, I started to get a visual synesthesia. So as, as I've got my hands on the, the cold granite countertop, the feeling of the cold is making me see everything like a photographic negative. So, you know, what is black, and black becomes white. You know, we all know what a photographic ne negative looks like. So then as I move my fingertips, the picture breaks down into, uh, now I see two identical images. So I see one of you and one of you here. And the more I move my f fingers, then you become four and 16 and 32. And I'm looking at her and I can see eight of her in my field of vision. And and she's in reverse, like reverse negative. I didn't tell her. I mean. And then that streetcar clang, these are kind of slashes up there, more of them over there as it goes further. As the cars are going past, when they rev the engines, it causes the brush stroke to get that bit larger coming off of it. And then you've got sound of construction there. And that's kind of almost like a corkscrew coming down towards me. Now you've got the talking of the crossing, and that's squiggles that are up in the air over there for me. And you've got some foot traffic there, and so there's kind of little marks on the pavement around where the sounds of the feet are. I don't think people know to the extent that it goes. Uh, and the extent that it goes, I do not share with people. Uh, I really have only shared probably with, with my doctors and my closest of relatives. I still haven't told my sister, and I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I will. It's just, 
I don't know, it's just one of those things that you don't feel like you always want to talk to people about because um, sometimes people will um, be judgmental. I mix that with another synesthete who sees uh, timbres, musical sounds, as different colors around him. And there was a moment where we were mixing together and we were discussing the cello and I was like, oh, that cello is way too furry, you've got to change that. It's nice just to be able to say that without someone going, what? And he can't see it furry, but his response was, oh good, I'm glad you said something because it was way too red for me. You know, and then we tweaked it, it was oranger for him, right? And the furry edges were gone for me. And so it's just nice when there's that knowing, although we can't see what each other does, you know, we, there's a knowing kind of thing that comes with it. It is a mistake to think that people with synesthesia are different from anyone else. Some of this hyperconnectivity is present in all of us. Science has shown that each of our senses are subtly influenced by the others, and we all make some multisensory associations. So in some way, we are all synesthetes. Some of us are just more conscious of it. Sorry, but it's very good. condition just kind of carries negative values to it. And I mean, what's a condition that's positive? And it's not like daydreaming. It's, if you, if you, you know, if you go for too many rides on the music, like you get off and I'm like, whew, what a, what a day, you know? And I'm like, I've done nothing but sit here. Like that wasn't exercise. So I would never want to lose that, no. No. It's there, it's that scratchy grating. That's actually a very comforting sound. I don't know what it sounds like to you guys, maybe like fingers on a chalkboard, but... 